Welcome to Narish Technologies. This is Srinivas. So, in the last session, we discussed a malloc function and calloc function in dynamic memory allocation concept. So, now in this session, we will see so what are the drawbacks of calloc and why they introduced the concept of a realloc. See, for example, using a calloc, using calloc function, we can allocate the memory dynamically to arrays allocate memory memory to array but what is the drawback so what is the drawback is we cannot increase and decrease the size of array decrease the size of array then how can you say that it's a dynamic memory allocation Right. So, dynamic me memory allocation, the main thing is what? So, we are able to increase or decrease the size of the memory block while application is executing. So, so calloc has failed in case of increasing and decreasing the size of a memory block. So, that is why they introduced the concept of a realloc. Just a calloc function is taking the help of a realloc function to increase and decrease the size of array right how so first we'll see so what is a realloc function prototype and how it executes okay so what is the prototype of a realloc function realloc so what is the description increase or decrease the size of the size of array increase or decrease the size of array so prototype real lock real lock the type is a size underscore t size underscore t. sorry it is a wide pointer type first argument first argument is a wide pointer so ptr second argument is a size underscore t size two arguments it is taking and return type is also wide pointer only return type is also wide pointer sir what is the first argument so what is this ptr means the address of memory block address of memory block to resize so resize means what either increase or decrease if you want to increase the size of the block or if you want to decrease the size of the block just resizing the block the block address you should specify sir why sir it is a wide pointer so wide pointer is already we know that it is a generic pointer, generic pointer it can accept any type of a block address because in all the cases we are not using only integer arrays, we are not using only float type right. Any type of array size if you want to increase or decrease it may be integer type array, it may be float type array or double type array, any structure type array user defined type array also right it will accept so that is why they have given is a wide pointer that will be converted automatically so suppose if you are passing integer array integer array pointer you want to decrease then it will be converted automatically into wide pointer every pointer will be converted into wide pointer higher type pointer will be converted directly it is a common type remember ok and next one sir what is the second argument second argument means the size of a new block size of new block either increased memory or decreased memory but size of the block new block size you should specify here old block address here new block size here two arguments and what is the return type wide pointer same story right after allocating the memory to block either increasing memory or decreased memory 
right it returns the base address of the block once again the base address of the block once again so that is so one example we'll see okay so we'll see one best example just consider stack stack creation we are using so once again stack implementation we'll discuss briefly in a algorithms concept in the coming sessions but now just i just want to right describe a real lock function so for that i am taking the example is a stack so what is a stack storing the information in last in first out manner so what you inserted last so that will come out first right so how to allocate the memory first we are taking initial capacity of a stack initial capacity suppose initial size of every stack is a 5 consider so first time we are allocating the memory using calloc function calloc so capacity is nothing but a size of the stack and next one sir stack size is a what type suppose stack size is a integer pointer type only nothing but integer data only we are storing only name i have given a stack just like a right up we are allocating the memory dynamically to arrays in place of arr i have written a stack it's a pointer variable so stack gets memory allocation first at some location stack get memory allocation now we have to allocate the memory to this pointer variable how much memory so here it is a capacity capacity is a 5 and here it is a size of size of integer this is memory allocation and the base address we are collecting into variable called stack variable stack and it is of type what is a integer pointer type then return type is a void pointer type so that void pointer type we are collecting into a stack a stack is of type integer pointer type so type casting is required so memory will be allocated how the memory will be allocated just uh, just like array only see suppose array memory will be allocated five locations like this just write it as a minus 90 degrees minus 90 degrees it will become a stack it will become stack so five locations 1 2 3 4 5 locations the address suppose 2046 and that returns a base address na so what is the base address 2046 so will be collected here is pointing to this one 2046 right so that will be stored here now how to store the information and all so that we'll see later but now the main concept is what is the importance of a real lock function for example here it is into stack we are storing five elements directly i am showing that 10 20 30 40 50 elements already stored now i want to store the sixth element so can i store the sixth element here no because right the size is a fixed size capacity only 5 so it's not a dynamic dynamic means so until the memory is available so in the ram so nothing but in the allocated memory for this program right so we can we can able to store the information but here problem is what only five elements we are storing we cannot store sixth element so it's not a dynamic memory allocation so that's why if you want to increase the size or decrease the size of the block which is already allocated by calloc function we should go for real lock how simple first we have to increase the capacity capacity plus plus now capacity becomes 6 now we are using real lock function real lock so what block size you want to increase it's a stack block so first argument is a stack stack and what is the second argument what is the size of the new block size is a capacity capacity into size of integer 
capacity is a 6, 6 into size of integer is a 2, 6 into 2 12 bytes. So, here it is, so we are it will be allocated right 12 bytes memory. So, nothing but one more block it will increase, one more block it will increase 2056. Now, you can store the sixth element 60 right how many times they are calling insert. So, then every time it will check right if capacity is a full stack is a full. So, then we are increasing the capacity and we are calling realloc and here it is. So, finally, we are collecting that value into stack realloc function return type is also wide pointer only we are collecting. So, this is the use of a realloc function sir in case of a realloc function for example, if you use a calloc function then what will happen sir calloc and here it is a capacity capacity and here it is a size of integer and that we are collecting into stack integer pointer same story. After increasing the capacity from 5 to 6 instead of using realloc function can I go for calloc function anyway 6 into 2. 12 bytes memory allocated here only sir yes of course, but it will not increase the size or in decrease the size of existing block calloc function always allocates a new block memory that means here another block will be allocated with a size 6 with the size 6 at another location. So, that will be collected into stack then stack start pointing to this one and it start pointing to this one. You will loss. So, whatever the data you have already inserted in the existing stack that is the problem. So, that is why this approach is not correct this approach. So, once you want to increase or decrease the size after allocating the array we always go for realloc function only more briefly examples on dynamic memory allocation we will see in the concept of data structures and algorithms in the coming sessions. So, we will see all these things ok for more videos. So, please subscribe to Naresh IT channel. Thank you.